This Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, this, this Pentecost. Father, bless us now as we preach the word in Jesus' name, amen. This Pentecost, or this celebration. I, I suppose I could preach... Pentecost 2021. This one. Now I want to say this to you, and perhaps you will learn a few things about the Pentecost and the celebration. Pentecost, as a celebration, dates back um, to 1440, 46, 1446 B.C. 1446 years before Jesus was born. Pentecost goes back um, that far. And um, it was in the year 1446 B.C. that the celebration that gave us Pentecost was instituted, and that celebration was a celebration called Passover. Would you turn to Exodus chapter number 12? And uh, I know that you have your Bibles because you came here. For service, and if you're familiar with us, you know that we're Bible Church. Thank God for the incoming of my mother. So good to see her. Exodus, chapter number twelve and verse fourteen says, Exodus twelve and fourteen, and this day shall be unto you a for a memorial. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And then he explains the things that they are to do. The Passover was memorialized by God himself to remind Israel of an event that took place that was, brother more, the straw that broke the camel's back. When God sent the deaf angel to Egypt and he killed the firstborn of the Egyptians, Pharaoh could not resist that. And it was that blow that caused Pharaoh to let God's people go. That event, the Lord said, um, I want you to memorialize this. And so that was, as I forementioned, and I'm mentioning the dates for a reason, that took place 1,446 years or so before our Lord was born. 50 days after that particular event called the Passover, God instituted another event 50 days later that we call today Pentecost. The word Pentecost literally means 50th. 50th. That goes to show that many times the definition of a word, you can't necessarily get that from a dictionary. Uh, the meaning of a word is not necessarily 
um, from the dictionary because Pentecost means 50th. And when we say that we are Pentecostal church, we're not saying we're a church in the 50s or the 50th, but it is linked to the holiness movement because of what God did in the book of Acts. When the Lord initially, and follow me on this, this, this history will help you, instituted Pentecost, it was called the festival of the harvest of the grain. Or perhaps more, the more familiar, the feast of weeks. Feast of weeks, literally feast of seven weeks. Seven weeks of harvesting the crop that the Lord blessed them to grow. That time was called uh, Pentecost in the New Testament. The festival of the harvest of the grain or the feast of weeks. It's also called Shavuot or Hag Shavuot, which literally means festival of the weeks. And it is the second of the three pilgrimages, pilgrim festivals of the Jewish religious calendar. If you look at Exodus chapter number 23 and verse 14, it says, Three times shall thou keep a feast unto me in the year. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread, also known as Passover. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days. As I commanded thee, in the time appointed in the month Abib, which is um, March, April for our Roman calendar, it says in that month, for it, for in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. He said, now when you come to celebrate the Passover, don't show up empty-handed. The second of the three, you'll find in verse 16. And the third in the same verse, it says, and the feast of the harvest, better known as Pentecost. The first fruits of thy labors which thou hast sown in the field. And the third feast was the feast of ingatherings. The Pentecost was uh, April, May. The feast of ingatherings was much later in the fall of the year. Fall to early winter, which is in the end of the year. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field, three times in the year all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Are you following me? All of this was to be celebrated and carried out once they reached the promised land. It was originally an agricultural festival marking the beginning of Pentecost, I mean, marking the beginning of the wheat harvest. Pentecost was seven days from Easter. We are now in the seven Sundays, excuse me, from Easter. We're in the seventh Sunday since Easter. Passover or Easter. Exodus chapter, let's look at Leviticus for a moment. And I want to show you some other things. Chapter 15. And we're going, to, no, let's go to Leviticus chapter 23. And we'll go to the 15th verse. Leviticus 
23 and 15. It says, And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, that is, from the day after the Sabbath, and from the day that you brought the sheaf of the heave offering. The sheaf of the heave offering was a bundle of grain stalks laid at length, um, and it was offered on the during the Passover. So once that offering was given to God during the Passover, 50 days later, they were to offer God uh, to celebrate Pentecost. Are you following? And even, verse 16, and even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, you shall number, here it is, 50 days. And you shall offer new meat, a new meat offering unto the Lord. And you shall bring out of your habitation, out of your homes, two weave loaves of two tenths deals that is four quarts of very fine flour and they shall be baked the, the sacrifice with leaven look at this they are and all of this is very important to this message they are the first fruits unto the Lord say amen Deuteronomy chapter 20 Chapter 16, stay with me as we let the Bible talk. Deuteronomy 16 and 9 says, Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 9. Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Begin to number seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn. When you're putting the sickle to the corn, that means you're harvesting the corn. So he says, these seven weeks, seven weeks, and uh, y'all got to learn your books. Just take it. And did I say six? What did I say? Did I, did I change it? Thank you. Thank you, because I'm trying to figure out, is it me or is it Memorex? <laughs> 16 and 9. Forgive me, saints. Am, am I, do I have it now? So how did all y'all know 16 and 9 if I? All right. Let's start. Deuteronomy, chapter 16, and verse 9. Seven weeks shall thou number <laughs> unto thee. These things happen. And I thank God for you having a sense of humor about it. Now, I know to some people it's against their religion to ever laugh. But it'll help you live longer to develop a sense of humor. We'll bury you fast. When nothing, when you never, the Bible says laughter does the heart good like medicine. And then as a leader, you can't take yourself so seriously. Amen. I, I, I laugh often at me just to join in with everybody else. Seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Began to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks that is unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a free will offering with a the sufficiency of a free will offering of thine hand and thou shalt give 
unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Well, uh, what should our attitude be? It says, and thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God. Thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservants and thy maidservant, the, the Levite that is within, within thy gate, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to place his name there. He said, on uh, this Pentecost celebration, he said, when you come in, come in rejoicing. Amen. He says, rejoice. He says, and not just you, but make sure your son rejoices and your daughter rejoices. Make sure your servants, your slaves, manservant and maidservant rejoice. The Levites ought to rejoice. Even the stranger, if there's a person who is in the assembly and they're not Jewish, he says, rejoice. The fatherless, speaking to children, whose dad is no longer with them, said, don't you sit there depressed. He said, rejoice. The widow whose husband is gone on this day, on, that, on this celebration, rejoice. See, you got to know how to shift with God. Praise the Lord. Well, Pastor, I don't feel like rejoicing. He didn't, I, I'm not reading anywhere where it mentions your feelings. He says the, the, the event itself. See, some things are too important in and of themselves for you to mess up just because you're in a bad mood or you had a bad day or you don't feel good. So you're going to ruin the whole thing. See, now, that's, that's, a, that, that, that's the way America is now. Because we're so selfish, we don't know how to put off just for a moment, just, just for an hour. Praise the Lord. We, everybody's got to know that you're feeling bad. God says, no, when you come before me 50 days after the Passover, he said, come rejoicing. You know, when you come to church, we're to enter into his courts with praise. We're, we're, we're to come in a certain kind of way. Amen. You, when you, it's, it's a blessing. Say, so, well, I don't have anything to praise him for. You're here. You're alive, aren't you? You're alive. You made it to the house of God. Praise the Lord. Every day in America, uh, you, you all thought people just started dying when COVID came out. But every day uh, in America, almost uh, 7,000 to 8,000 people die in this country per day. Worldwide, the estimation is 150,000 per day. And you've been sitting here, and I've been sitting here for 50, 60, and 70 years or more with people like that dying per day. If for no other reason, if for no other reason to lift your hands, that's a reason to tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. And, and if you just can't thank him for, for that, then he can do something about it. He can just withdraw that blessing. And I guarantee you, the rest of us going to keep on thanking God. Amen. Because it's a blessing to, to, to be alive. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Let, let me preach this and we, we're going to go home. The question is, why choose this feast to pour out your Holy Spirit and to officially give birth to the church. The church age officially started 
officially started on uh, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 on that particular day of Pentecost. Now, what I've just established, uh, if you're listening, is that Pentecost, even when it was called the Feast of the End Gatherings or the Feast of Weeks, has, was, had been celebrated since 1446 B.C. But on this particular one, God decides to give birth to the church. Jesus prophesied uh, six months before this happened, he said, uh, who do men say that I am? And they, when Peter told him, thou art the Christ, he says, good, upon this rock, I will build my church. But he didn't build it that day. He built it. He birthed it on this particular day of Pentecost. Are you following me? Uh, let's look at this. In Acts chapter number one. And... Uh, Bible says, uh, verse 1 says, The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Until the day he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he had showed himself alive after his passions, after his death, burial, and resurrection, he showed himself alive by many infallible proofs. Paul writes about the infallible proofs in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, and look at this, and being seen of them, 40 days after Jesus rose again uh, on the Passover, because he was the Passover lamb. When, he, when the Father raised him from the dead, Jesus stayed here for 40 days before he ascended to heaven. He stayed, follow me now, 40 days being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me. Now, we, we can go back to John chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, 16, and 17, and hear Jesus talk about the comforter, the comforter, when I, the, the, the spirit of truth, when I will send him in my name. We can go to Matthew's gospel, uh, chapter 3, and we can see where even John the Baptist came preaching about the kingdom of God. And then John said, there cometh one after me who is mightier than I am, and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So John comes talking about the Holy Ghost. Jesus told them about the Holy Ghost. So Jesus now, after he's resurrected, and this is the 40th day, because he's about to be taken up, he, t he tells them, now I want you to go to Jerusalem and uh, you stay there until I send you the promise of the Father. And he says, now you've heard me talk about him agnosium. All right? He says, for truly John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized, you shall be submerged with the Holy Ghost, not 
many days from now. Not many days hence. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. Now look at this. And when they were, when they therefore were come together, they asked him, Lord, asked him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Notice what they did. They, they changed the subject. That's just like people. See, we're carnal. We want to know about things here on this earth. God, when you going to work this out? And Jesus will work it out. <laughs> How are you going to pay your bills? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and see, they wanted, uh, they wanted to know about political things because they were under the domination of Rome. And the Jews hated being under Roman occupation because the, among the problem with Roman occupation is you got to worship Caesar. And they were trying to make Caesar God. Remember, someone said to Jesus, uh, who, to, who, to, to whom did, do this money belong to? Jesus said, whose face is on it? They said, Caesar's. Well, Jesus says, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but unto God the things that are God. So they had to contend with Caesar worship, which really was a problem with their monotheistic belief because the Jews didn't worship anybody but God. And so they felt that based on the prophecies of, uh, of the prophet Amos, the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Daniel, which prophesied that the Messiah would come and that he would free Israel from the Romans, or anybody who uh, tried to occupy them, they said, will you at this time, because it sounds like you're getting ready to go somewhere and not come back, will you at this time uh, deliver the kingdom to Israel? Set us free. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father have put in his own power. I could, I could rest right here for the rest of the day because one of the reasons so many Christians are so frustrated is that we think that we're supposed to control God and that we give God a timetable. And many of you, you feel that you're not where you should be. You're not as far along as you should be, that, that God hadn't blessed you the way you thought you would be by now. That's because you are trying to control God. God's time clock. See, when the Lord makes you a promise, he will bring it to pass when he brings it to pass. You can't make it happen. You can't hurry God. With him, you just got the way. As a matter of fact, you would enjoy your life better if you move at God's pace and stop trying to get God to move at yours because he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. If the Lord makes you a promise, he will. It will come to pass, but it will come to pass when he deems that it's necessary uh, for it to come to pass. Now, if God tells you, I'm going to do something for you in three days, all right, now he's just giving you a time limit. So you got a right to expect it in three days. But if he doesn't put time on it, you can't either. They said, will you at this time deliver the kingdom to Israel? Jesus says, not for you to know uh, the power, the things that are in the Father's hands. He says, but you shall receive power after when the Holy Ghost have come upon you. Good God Almighty. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, listen to this, saints. When he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. This is the ascension of Jesus Christ. Taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Oh, could you imagine that sight? As he's talking, he begins to rise. And, uh, and he's going up, and they're standing there, and they're looking at him. And, he, and they watch him until he goes out of sight. He's engulfed in the clouds, and our Savior is gone. 
the mighty ascension of Jesus Christ. And while they were looking up, while they, uh, after he's out of sight, you can't even see him no more. They're still looking up. I would have been looking up too. They're still looking up. The Bible says, while they were looking up toward heaven, two men stood by them in white apparel. Might have been the same two that was at his tomb when they went looking for him. They found two angels there saying, why do you seek the living? among the dead. Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus. They said, why do you seek the living among the dead? Don't you remember he told you on the third day he'd get up from here? So why are you here? Because he, to he told you that he wasn't going to, to stay here. Are you praying for me? The Bible says, and uh, those, those men said to them, verse 11 says, uh, which also said, ye men of Galilee. They were Galileans. They were Galileans. You men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go up. Are you praying for me? This was day 40. After the Passover, day 40, Jesus goes up. Now, Pentecost that they've been having since 1446 BC is 10 days away. Jesus left. I told you when I was laying the foundation. I know it was boring. But, you know, I want you to learn. I want you to know the doctrine. So I think, I think no understanding the Bible is very important. So now we're, we're in, praise the Lord, a waiting period. Day 40. And uh, now, let, let, let me talk to you. You see, just as, as as the days between the Passover and Pentecost were symbolic of the days of waiting between Israel's departure from Egypt and its entrance into the promised land when they could finally offer fruits from the soil of the Holy Land, so... These days, between the Passover resurrection of Jesus and the giving of the first fruits of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost were also days of waiting. What's the point? You know, when you're serving God, you got to learn how to handle the days of waiting. See, if you can't wait on him, you can't make it. Because, see, all of us, God deals with all of us through days of waiting. Praise the Lord. Now, how, how, how do you do while you're waiting on God to fix it? Some of you, you don't lift your hands. You don't praise him. You just sit there. God could be moving everywhere. And you're like a knot on the log because, you, because you're hurt. You feel bad. You're depressed. Well, in your days of waiting. That, that's when the Lord, Lord want to see who's going to praise me while they're waiting on me. Who will praise me through their broken heart? Yeah, yes, yes. Your situation is what it is. But can you, while you're waiting for me to fix it, operate and do what I've told you to do? The days of waiting between the Passover and Pentecost 50 days was symbolic of the days of waiting between Israel leaving Egypt and entering into the promised land. Well, now Jesus gives them days of waiting. Luke 24 and 49, he says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. He says, now, you got to wait on this. 
And so go to Jerusalem and wait until you get submerged into power from on high. Again, Acts 1 and 4, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Praise the Lord, which he said, you have heard of me. And also, as the Israelites celebrated Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, they offered God the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Remember Leviticus 23 and 17, the last clause says, they are the first fruits unto the Lord. So when they were celebrating Pentecost, they had to, uh, when they collected the, the grain and when they collected uh, the, the harvest, before they enjoyed any of it for themselves, they had to offer God the first fruit. Hence, God first. There is something to be, to be said for living a God first lifestyle. Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and all these things, what we shall eat, what we shall wear, what we shall uh, put on. All these things, the Bible says, shall be added unto you. Seek God and he'll add all these things to you. Many times we seek these things at the expense of God. You should never do that. Seek God at the expense of those things and he will add those things to you. But if you seek those things at the expense of God, you'll probably end up with neither. And if you, get, if you get the things, they won't deliver, they won't satisfy, because no one can satisfy the human heart but the Lord. So they offered, they offered the first fruits of the harvest. The people offered the first fruits of the harvest. But in the new Pentecost, the one that birthed the church, if you notice, Jesus didn't tell them to go and offer God anything. He told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the Father to give something to them. It's a switch. In the Old Testament, they owned the Pentecost. They are Pentecost. They gave to God. But in the New Testament, Acts chapter 1, God said, the Lord says, I want you to wait for, for what I want to give to you. Because I want to give you some, someone special. The Bible says, God offered the first fruits of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 23 says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of the body. And then uh, uh, Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 13 through 14 says, In whom also, uh, in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed and were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. What in the world is he saying? This is amazing. What he's saying is when God gave us uh, the Holy Ghost, when he gave the Holy Ghost on that day in Acts, or when he gives us the Holy Spirit now, the Holy Spirit is the down payment he is the down payment on what God has for us. He's the first fruits. Just like when they finished the Feast of Weeks and they gave God the first fruits. That meant, the, that was the people's way of saying, Lord, when we give you the first fruits of this offering, this is our way of acknowledging that the whole offering belongs to you. Everything is yours. But we're going to give you the first fruits of it. Well, when the Lord gives us the Holy Ghost, 
That's the Lord's way of saying to all of us, this is just a down payment for what I have for you when you get to the other side. My God, even, I mean, on this side, the Holy Ghost will make you go to running. The Holy Spirit put joy in your heart, and clapping in your hands. The Holy Spirit gives us discernment. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. The Holy Spirit gives us joy. The Holy Spirit helps us understand, praise the Lord, spiritual things. The Holy Ghost helps us to get through this COVID and all of this mess that's going on where they're trying to call wrong right and right wrong the Holy Ghost will teach you and show you what's right Jesus said he will show us things to come and yet with all that the Holy Ghost is doing in us that's just a down payment that's just a down payment payment on all that God actually has for us when we get over there. Most people, most people do not pay cash for their homes. But you know what we do? You put a down payment on. Earnest money. Then the bank finance the rest and you make the payments. But, at the, but even at that, it's your house. You have the keys to it. You have the rights to it. It's your home, even though what you've actually put down was earnest money. But you live there, and you carry on the same way most people buy cars. Most people don't pay cash. Most people pay down. Am I right about it? Yes. And, uh, but, it but they still drive it. Yes. And whether you paid cash, paid down, or leased it, you can point at it and say, that's my car. And, and they, there's no one who can tell you that that is not your car. Well, God have given you the down payment. He's given us the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost dwelling in the believer says this is a down payment on what I have for you when you get to heaven. I thank God for the down payment. Are you with me? And uh, when, they, when they gave the Lord, when they gave the Lord the first fruits of the harvest, back in the Feast of Weeks and Pentecost, by giving him the first fruits, not only does that, was that their way of saying to God, we know that everything belongs to you, but that's their way of also saying to God, by, because we made this sacrifice, we're hoping that your generosity and your kindness will continue. Since you gave us what we have, well, we're bringing this offering saying, Lord, please don't stop blessing us. Well, when the Lord gives us the Holy Ghost, that's God's way of saying your whole soul, mind, and body belongs to me. And if I blessed you and gave you the down payment of my spirit, that's my way of saying I'll be with you until I come and take you back home. I'll be with you until you die. No matter what happens, you can count on me because I've given you, praise the Lord, a down payment. So the blessings will keep coming. My presence will keep coming. All of this hey, is my way of, this is what I'm saying to you, by giving you the Holy Ghost. How many are glad that you have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling on the inside? It speaks to what God has given, and it speaks to what God will give. And I praise God for the Holy Ghost. So now, here we are. And praise the Lord. Day 41. They elected, uh, they had a, a vote, and, and they, they, they found out that they needed to replace Judas. So they had a vote, and the lot fell on a man named Matthias. Now, Jesus didn't tell them to have a vote, but they went on and did that on their own. All right, day 42, praise the Lord. They were there, and nothing happened. Day 43, 43 was just like 42. Nothing, they didn't hear a thing. 
Maybe that church rat over there in the corner, in the upper room, but that was it. Oh Lord, day 45, 46 and 47, mm, nothing. And day 48 was just like day 41. And they said, well, he told us to wait. And somebody told them, said, why are we here waiting? Y'all do know that they're coming in town from everywhere. They're checking in all the hotels. They're checking in all of the inns. Look at the people coming in from all over the world. Jews are coming in to celebrate, hallelujah, uh, Pentecost. And they, but they, they, the, the, the saints were not a part of that. They were in the upper room waiting on the Lord. Day 49, nothing. But then I heard Luke when he said on day 50, he said, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, all of a sudden God said, this is the day that I have set aside to send the Holy Ghost. The Bible said while they were in there, it said suddenly, there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind. You, it sound like a tornado, sound like a train. The wind began to blow. I can see Mary, the mother of Jesus, saying, oh my God, something's about to happen. Peter looking around talking about what's going on. John don't know what to say. And the upper room began to shake because of the sound of a rushing mighty wind. And there was something had began to take place. You see, the time of waiting was over and God was about to move. And he told me to tell somebody today, your time of waiting is over and the Lord is about to move. Tell God, yeah, yeah, Lord. And the oh Lord, not only did they hit a sound but it shifted it shifted from noise and it became fire this thing is just like fire shut up in your bones it became like fire cloven tongues of fire and the fire lit upon each one of them hallelujah they're looking at each other do you see that on over your head what do you see what's on the top of yours do you see over there fire fire happening in the upper room good god almighty and then another phenomenon began to take place these galileans began to speak in fluent languages languages that they never learned languages that they didn't know so therefore languages that they couldn't understand but they began to speak and somebody, somebody said somebody, somebody, somebody saw it, ran downstairs, ran out in the streets, ran down there where they were celebrating Pentecost and said, I know we're celebrating Pentecost, but y'all need to put this down, put down the grain, put down the stalks, put down your offerings and come see what's going going on at the upper room because there is something happening up there that's unlike anything we've ever seen and now oh, the crowd left Pentecost and went to the upper room walked in there and they heard they heard these Galileans speaking African dialects speaking all these different tongues going off in perfect language praising God and the folk was surprised and they wanted to know how is this possible well it was possible because the Lord enabled them to 
to do it on that day. That was the birth of the church. This was the fulfillment of the prophet Joel who said in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall see visions. Your young men shall dream dreams. Ah, oh! And on my servants and on my handmaidens will I pour out of my spirit and they will prophesy. The people saw it and they were blessed. That's what happened on this, that particular day of Pentecost in the first century AD. What a day. We ought to praise God for that day of Pentecost. We ought to thank God for that one. We ought to thank him for all the others that happened before that one. And we ought to thank him for all of the others that happened since that one. But now let me, before I close, can I preach just a little bit about this, this one, this Pentecost. I preached about that one. Can I preach about this one? This one, this Pentecost. Pentecost in the age of COVID. Pentecost with people dying. Pentecost, thousands of folk didn't live to see it. People lost their lives. Trouble in the streets. Social unrest. Trouble everywhere. False teachers, false preachers, the devil is attacking marriages. The devil is calling wrong right and right wrong with all the stuff that's going on. And last year, about this time, the church was closed. You couldn't be here. The pews was empty. But this Pentecost, this day of Pentecost, the Lord blessed us to live and to see it. The Lord has given us the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Somebody say yeah, say yeah, yeah. You ought to just lift your hands and praise him for this one. This one, this one, this one. Somebody say this one, this one. The devil said, I wouldn't make it. Somebody, you got COVID from between the last one and this one, but Jesus healed you, raised you up, and here you are. You ought to praise him. Somebody else. You've been through the storm and the rain since the last one. But look at you standing here. Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost. And that with a mighty burning fire. Oh, somebody praise God. For this, this one, this Pentecost, this Pentecost. Woo! Go ahead on, brother. Woo! Now that's what I'm called. Somebody shout and say, you don't know what happened to me. You don't know what I've been through since the last 
lift your hands and worship Jesus. You know, when you see people praising the Lord, reminiscing of everything that happened between this time last year and what it took to get them here today. Oh, Lord. You, you, you don't know my story. And I don't know your story. But ain't God a good God? I look back there at Sister Patricia Shell. Uh, they don't know how many surgeries. And, oh, Lord, how the enemy tried to take you out. Multiple infections. But God, do I have anybody here who can say, but God, but God, ah, but God, oh, ah, hey, 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 Lord. Hey, God, Look at Mother Williams in the hospital, but God brought her out. There were times when I remember I had to fight just to hold my head up those times when even my friends tried to make a fool of me there were things in my heart that they just couldn't see they talked about me they said that I was hopeless. Well, my mind tangled in the night. I mean, strong today, but strong hearts, they keep going. And that is why I'm standing here today. This time my song of love and life won't go away. I'll sing forever. Thank you, Jesus. Here in the sunshine, I've lived to see the sun break through the storm. I'm 
standing here. Come on, oh. come together. Lift up your voices. This time, my soul of love and light won't go away. I'll sing forever here in. Live to see the sun break through the storm. And I'm so glad we're standing here. Everybody sing with me. Come together. Raise up your voices. This time my soul of love and life won't go away. I'll sing forever. In God's beautiful sunshine, can I testify? I'm left to see. person next to you say you don't know what I've been through and you don't and I don't know what you've been through <laughs> but we're here My story may not be like yours, but we all have a story. We've all come from somewhere, oh Lord. And maybe it wasn't you, but your mama went through, your daddy went through, your husband or your wife or your children. Oh Lord. It took something for God to get us here. And I'm so glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. He told me, tell everybody, tell the husband, tell the wife, tell the saints, tell the men, tell the women, tell the people. Tell them to allow me to refill them with the Holy Ghost on this day of Pentecost. We don't have problems that we can't handle. All we need is a double portion of the Holy Ghost. Woo! The Holy Spirit is a keeper of all this pressure in society with them trying to change what we believe. 
pressure us. The devil is a liar. Somebody ought to wave both hands and say, I'm not going to break. He ain't going to break my spirit because I have the Holy Ghost. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Oh, he's a keeper. Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Woo. Yes, sir. Won't he do it? He's a keeper. He's a keeper of my soul. He keeps my mind. Yeah, yeah. There is a peace. There is a peace which passes all understanding. You want God to refill you, come down here. You want the Lord to refill you. And if you've never been filled, ask God to give you the Holy Ghost today. Won't He'll fill you. He'll fill you. He'll give you what you need. Y'all can social distance you. Social distance yourself. You know, they don't about dropped all that anyway. Oh Lord. Shake out of the boss. Glory. Glory. Times like these, you know, they're trying to squeeze us in. The merger between the business world, the medical community. The educational community. Corporate, it's fascism, all of them lining up, t trying to tell us what we got to believe. The Biden administration just sided, the courts ruled with them the other day, that Christian colleges, we might have picked a good time to get out, Christian colleges got to provide space for transgenders. Now, now ain't that something? Now the government walking into uh, people's freedom of religion that's the devil now you go go to work and they're trying to pressure you on the job to take the shot now if you want to take the shot or not take the shot that's that, that's your business but it ought not to be I, the, the company's been ah whatever happened whatever happened to hippo laws now homosexuals could give you aids didn't have to tell you 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 they they are covered but now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, HIPAA is going out the window. And uh, they'll ask you, have you had the shot? And they know that that ain't legal. They're trying to put pressure on the saints. Trying to tell us that a man can turn himself into a woman. A woman can turn herself into a man. And I'll tell you something they're doing to black folk. They're really messing us up. They are screwing us up and I'm brave enough to tell you now they're gonna they're gonna they're, they'll get mad they'll get mad but get mad go watch somebody else I don't care get mad they are trying to mess us up the world the left they are giving us heroes we're getting the wrong heroes. Our new, hero, our new heroes now are criminals. We're getting ready to have days of celebration. We're going to celebrate this person, celebrate that person. And you ask yourself, okay, so what did they do? Because, you know, we know why we celebrated King. You know, we understand why we celebrated, we celebrate all the others, black and white, they did this, they did that, they did the other. Now we're celebrating criminals who died while committing the crime. They all of a sudden now become people to paint murals of and to march. Now I know you don't, I know you don't like it, I know you don't like it, I know you don't, I know you don't, know you don't. but I tell you what, I tell you what. Just go to the celebration and have words. 
You get up and say, you know, I just like to know one thing. Uh, I, I'm enjoying this celebration. My God, I'm having a ball. Thank you for the hot dog. And uh, I'm enjoying the music and everything. Uh, but will somebody tell me, what did he do? Oh, well, the police shot him. No, no, I, I, got, I know that. I know that. I know how he died. My question is, what did he do? Now, let me tell you, I was talking to some white friends of mine, you know. See, I'm, I'm, I'm sanctified. I have black and white friends. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. You, you're not going to turn me against. I'm not going to become what I loathe. What black folk hated about the Klan and all them people was that they, tried, they wrote us off and judged us solely on our color. And we knew that was wrong. And King challenged America to live up to her creed. Am I right? That all men are created equal. Am I right? Amen. And that people should be judged by the content of their character, Amen. not the color of their skin, right? Amen. Now, through critical race theory and all that other stuff, we have, are now teaching our people to believe the same thing that we condemned rightfully condemned the Klan for and white supremacists for. We were right in saying that you are wrong to judge me based on my color. And by the way, ain't nothing never been wrong with my color. See, got to throw that in there. Got to throw that in there now. Because I'm not, I'm not a good man despite my color. My color factors into it. This is not a ball and chain. This is the way God made me. You know why I like being a black man? Well, well, you know, the main reason? I'm going to tell you the main reason. God made me that way. <laughs> Had he made me white, I love being a white man. Had he made me red, I love being a red man. I agree with God. You know, the Bible says, Woe uh, unto him who, th who thrive with his maker. God, you should have made me Asian specific. No, God knew what he was doing. And now we're doing the same thing. We're doing the same thing. And we're doing it with a straight face. We're doing it with a straight face. We're claiming superiority based on color. And we're putting others down based on color. And now we're picking heroes. You can't ask what did they do? What have they accomplished? How many books did they write? No. The, what was the rap sheet like? Can't bring that up. So if you bring that up now, they're gonna throw you out of the pot. Oh, I know. Listen, I know you don't like what I'm saying, but I'm telling the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I was talking to some uh, uh, Caucasian friends, and I said, you know, I don't hear anybody asking that question. And one of my friends spoke up and said something. It startled me. I didn't expect him to say it. He said, "White people are." They asked him, "What did he do?" If we're going to have a celebration, if we're going to, you know, have a party right. and, and a big gathering, right. okay, we're, we're going to commemorate. Right. Commemorate what? Right. Now, you ain't going to get no commemoration just for existing. Right. You got to do something. Something's wrong. And once people like that become our heroes, it affects our behavior. It affects the behavior of our young men. It affects the behavior of our young women. We begin to walk in that kind of behavior and adopt that kind of backwards thinking. And that is not the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. He leads us and guides us into all truth. When there is a case of uh, racism and, and, and uh, uh, of white supremacy and anything like that, when there's a legitimate case, it ought to be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And, uh, but uh, you, we, can't, we can't become people who just drink this stuff in and begin to walk in in a way where we are now angry at God's creation because God created his creation that way. And the same people who will teach you to hate that would then turn around and tell you, 
Now, if this man go and turn him, try, and try to turn himself into a woman, you ought to partic- you ought to go, you ought to respect him for that. This thing is all messed up. So, how do you beat it? How do you stand up under this kind of pressure? The media and everybody's in on it. They're all in on it. You can't trust any of them. Half of them on television. Well, I've had my shot. Walk out with three masks on. Well, why are you doing all that? I don't believe any of them. How do you hold up? You let God fill you. You let him refill you with the Holy Ghost. Let him give you power. The Spirit of God is... Do you know that the Holy Ghost is still in the discernment business? He still... He still discerns and he tells us what's right and what's wrong. Yes, he does. He didn't quit his job. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Facebook Live, YouTube Live, lift your hands. If you're where you can, we're going to pray. And I'm going to pray. And I'm going to ask God to fill you and refill you with the Holy Ghost. And, and if you believe God, he won't refill you nor fill you based on the volume of my voice. But he'll fill you or refill you based on the faith in your heart. And there's no such thing as it not being your day to be filled with the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost have been poured out unto all flesh. Hallelujah. He's already, that's what happened on the, in the first century uh, Pentecost, the day after Jesus, 50 days after Jesus rose again, he released the Holy Ghost into the whole world. Before then, only kings and, and, uh, and, and prophets, the Holy Spirit would move on them. Now we can have the Holy Ghost. And right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. And we ask you, oh, Heavenly Father, to fill us again with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And somebody need to be filled for the first time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, God, God, the Holy Ghost, come down right now. God, the Holy Ghost, baptize in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You ought to lift your hands and tell him, have your way, Holy Spirit. I don't put up a fight. I receive you right now in the name of Jesus. Move in me. Move in me, Lord. Move in my heart. Move in my mind. Move in my soul. with my down payment. Feel me. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Have your way in my heart, in my mind, in my soul. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, fall on me. Move on me. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. There he is. Let him move. 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 move. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Renew my mind. Renew my spirit. Heal my broken heart. Put me back on track. Somebody failed. Somebody messed up. But the Holy Ghost will put you back on track. Somebody got off. But the Holy Ghost will put you back on. Somebody lost their way. But the Holy Spirit will turn your way. Turn you back around. 
Don't you leave, don't you leave. Don't you leave your home. Don't you leave your family. Don't you leave. Let the Holy Ghost have his way in the name of Jesus. Don't you leave Jesus. Don't you leave the church. Don't you leave Christianity. Let the Holy Ghost have his way. Keep me Holy Ghost. Anoint me Holy Spirit. He loves you. You who are streaming. He loves you. Let him come in. Let him come in. Let him come into your home. Let him come into your hospital room. Let him come in, Sister McGivery. Let him heal you right now. Let him come in. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Send joy. Send peace, send power in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Ghost. Joy, 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 peace like a river attending my way. Let him have his way, let him have his way. Holy Spirit, come down on me. Let me have, let me have your power. Let me have your joy, yeah. Let him bless you, let him bless you, let him bless you, hey, hey. Hallelujah, I'm gonna make it. I'm getting stronger every day. Yes, Lord. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Go on and offer them up to you. Offer up your screw ups. Offer up what you messed up. Offer up to him what you got off. Offer up to him what you got weak. Ask God to forgive you. Ask God to touch you. He'll do it. He'll do it. He will.
you go to your seats rejoicing in the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 How many believe God refilled them today? Let me see you wave your hand. I believe it. Did anyone get filled today for the first time? Let me see your hand. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Time to bless the Lord by the way of giving. What a wonderful God He is. What a wonderful God He is. I can't thank Him enough for what He's done for me. What a wonderful for God he is oh, what a wonder for God he is what a wonder for God he is I can't thank him enough for what he's done for me what a He's a wonderful God. 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 He